I think he's got one one half of the caliper in his hands. Um, we just cleaned it, but it's all dirty, greasy, oily in there, getting some oil on the pads. So we know the seals are bad in it. So we'll clean that all up, and we'll pop pop the piston out of it. Okay, in the center of each one of these adjusters is a 3 16 Allen wrench. And you, you reach in there, and he's, he's using a ratchet with a 3 16 on it. And he's taking that loose. That'll be loose by now. Unscrew the other one. Break, break, break pad, pad drops out. Drops out of there. You can see the, the holes in it to where that threads in. Those those come through the center of those adjusters. These pads are uh, showing some wear on them. Even though there's still a wear mark line in the center of the pad, there's enough worn off the pad that now the piston is starting to push out of the caliper. And once they start pushing out very far, that's when you start getting your leaks. So we want to be sure and put new pads in this when we put it back together also. So what we want to do here now is we want to get this piston out of here. So now we're going to put, we're going to put air to this fitting and pop this piston out of there. What he's doing right now is, is, is just getting this unit ready. He's going to flush these adjusters. When you adjust your brake pads, uh, you, you use that larger Allen wrench. And he's backing these out and flushing them with the case right now. So when he, we get ready to put the new pads in, those will already be in position. And he'll get the other one ready. Then we're going to blow the pucks out of there. It's pretty much standard brake procedure with pretty much any type of hydraulic brake. Okay, so now we're going to blow the puck out of there. So we'll just put air to that and it'll come right out. A little bit of fluid coming out with it. Okay, so that's what you got. Now we're going to talk about a couple things here that, that happen on these. I'm just going to dump the excess fluid out of there. I'm going to wipe this bore down and I'm going to inspect this bore. The reason I'm doing this, now, now this is on a single engine cart we're running that on. We don't have much problem with that. But I'm going to look at the bore all the way around here. What happens on our dual engine carts where you got a bunch of horsepower and you got a bunch of extra weight, when you put the brakes on, it slams that, that puck forward and I've had them pocket this area out. And when that starts to pocket out in there, it doesn't matter how many sets of seals you put in there, you cannot fix that brake. Your, your caliper unit is junk at that point. So. That's something I've seen on our duels. We're going to replace this O-ring right here. We've got a new set of O-rings. And we'll be putting a new set of O-rings on there. These will just pull right off of here. Take a little tiny screwdriver and lift them right off. So, winter's for building, but it's also for maintenance. And we got the 6-1 card out of the trailer. It's got a... Mac 91 on it, Burkle clutch, oil, that's an oil bath clutch, expansion pipe. That's the one we're doing the brake job on currently. See the dual carburetors.
Okay, he's putting the O-ring on. Uh, the brake piston now. Get those two O-rings on. And I'll put a, get a little uh, dot five there on your fingers. Now he's gonna, gonna wipe that down with dot five around that O-ring, so it's got a little dot five on it. Went uh, wipe the inside of that bore down. Put a little dot five on that bore. And put the piston in. And when you put the piston in, make sure you put the right side down. So the side with the little okay. step on it goes down in the with the O ring. With the O ring. ring goes down in there. Don't put it any other so way. So you can see the bore there. One thing I want to mention, besides the fact that you should have a set of those O-rings with you when you go to the track, you should also buy one of these adjusters. The reason why you buy one of these adjusters, I've had like three of them go bad. This little shiny cap is pressed down into this part that's threaded. And I've had like three of these come out of there, and when they come out, you can't adjust your caliper unit anymore. And if you're at a major race or something like that, and you need one of these, if you don't have one, you might not find one because nobody else is going to have one either. Only somebody like me might. So, not a bad idea to have one of those. Not an expensive item to have in your, in your parts. So, you know, that's the main thing now. Is uh, Now you just got to put a new set of pads in there and reassemble everything. So that's what I was talking about on the brake pad where, yeah, you still got brake pad, uh, but there's a lot worn off of it. There's more brake pad on this end than there is on this end. And once your piston starts getting far enough out of your uh, caliper unit, that's when the piston starts moving around because it doesn't have as much bore to follow. That's when you start getting leaks. So keep pretty good brake pads in your system. Okay, I want to talk about brake disc again. So even though this came from MCP with the slots cut in it, I went ahead and drilled it more. And people might think, well, gee, you know, you, you took away all the rotor surface, you know, so how are you going to have good braking with this cart? What I found is, is if you use very much brake, the, the rotor gets so hot, you've got to get rid of the heat. Additional drilling of the rotor gets rid of more heat, you end up with better brakes, longer into the event than you'd have if you'd have one that's not drilled. I drill all the rotors. Sometimes I don't drill them this much. Uh, a lot of times I'll do every other hole. So this one would be drilled here, but this one would not be. And so I would drill the big hole here and the little hole there and go on around the rotor that way. Um, so that does a lot to get the heat out of the rotor. Uh, a lot of guys think they have brakes. You go drive their cart and they don't have brakes. They got a solid rotor that's never doesn't have a single slot in it, doesn't have a hole in it anywhere. Uh, maybe they don't drive with much brake, but generally you got to use some brake or you're not going to be fast. And uh, you can't trail brake, you can't run inches off of somebody um, and just allow your momentum to keep you from running over them. So you got to have decent brakes and uh, yeah, I've talked to guys, so I don't use any brake. Well, yeah, I've watched you drive, too. A lot of times, uh, maybe you're fast, maybe you're not. Um, that's not for me to necessarily judge, but I just know that generally you want to keep the heat out of that rotor. You're going to be driving harder. You're going to be able to trail brake. You're going to be able to drive deeper into the corner before you have to brake. Uh, everything's just going to work better for you in the end. And a lot of these older vintage carts especially, 
Those just had solid rotors on them because nobody knew any better. So Sean's tightening up the inner bolt that holds the brake pad together in the unit and uh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, he's gonna have it sitting down there that little that one collar sitting up. The There's a little there. little steel collar that goes around that bolt. You might have to actually put something on it and tap it down. But. So he's gonna tighten those up. He's tightening up the inner screw that holds the, the brake lining on. So uh, how tight is that, Sean? Oh, I know. It's good and tight. Good and tight yeah. Somehow I knew he'd say that. So this is the shop method for bleeding the brakes. Put a quarter inch fitting in there with a piece of hose here. Uh, most of the time I do this with one one person deal because I'm here by myself but in this case we'll put a little air to that and we'll push that fluid to the back as long as he's got that open. I'll put a little air to it. Fill it again, I don't know. Okay, it's squirted out in this. When you use that brake bleed method using the hose, you get done, there's no air left in those lines, on. pads all adjusted and everything. So that's that's our travel with fully bled system without a single bubble in the line. So on these carts, a lot of the guys don't like that little white tubing down there. They just got to have three AN lines, just like we use on the motorcycles and stuff. That screws on a three AN fitting. What they don't realize that underneath this plastic sheath and this and this braided piece of metal that, that's underneath there, some of it's plastic braided, some of it's metal braided. Uh, you have that same tubing inside of here. You got that little hole. It's got the little little flare on it. The plastic line is put over top of that. This is all crimped down in place. Uh, this, All this outer coating is just an anti-wear area. This line's not any stronger blowout proof than that line is if you have the correct brake line on there because that's what you got inside here.